Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted in me? When the psalmist gave utterance to these words, his spirit was dejected, and his heart was heavy within him. In the checkered career of David, there was not a little which was calculated to sadden and depress. The cruel persecutions of Saul who hunted him as a partridge upon the mountains. The treachery of his trusted friend Ahithophel, perfidy of Absalom, and the remembrance of his own sins were enough to overwhelm the stoutest. And David was a man of like passions with us. He was not always upon the mountaintop of joy, but sometimes spent seasons in the slough of despond and the gorge of gloom. But David did not give way to despair, nor succumb to his sorrows. He did not lie down like a stricken beast and do nothing but fill the air with his howling. No, he acted like a rational creature, and like a man looked his troubles squarely in the face. But he did more. He made diligent inquiry. He challenged himself. He sought to discover the cause of his despondency. He asked, Why are you cast down, O my soul? He desired to know the reason for such depression. This is often the first step toward recovery from a dejection of spirit. Repining and murmuring get us nowhere. Fretting and wringing our hands bring no relief, either temporarily or spiritually. There needs to be self-interrogation, self-examination, and self-condemnation. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? We need to seriously take ourselves to task. We need to fearlessly face a few plain questions. What is the good of giving way to despair? What possible gain can it bring me? To sit and sulk is not redeeming the time. To mope and mourn will not mend the matters. Then let each despondent one call his soul to an account and inquire what adequate cause could be a sign for peevishness and fretting. We may have great cause to mourn for sin and to pray against prevailing impiety, but a great dejection even under the severest outward afflictions or inward trials springs from unbelief and a rebellious will. We should therefore strive and pray against it, in quote Thomas Scott. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Can't you discover the real answer without asking counsel from others? Is it not true that deep down in your heart, you already know, or at least suspect, the root of your present trouble? Are you cast down because of distressing circumstances which your own folly has brought you into? Then acknowledge with the psalmist, I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and you in faithfulness afflicted me. Psalm 119, verse 75. Is it because of some sin, some course of self-will, some sowing to the flesh, that you are now of the flesh reaping corruption? Then confess the same to God and plead the promise found in Proverbs 28, 13. He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Or are you grieved because providence has not smiled upon you so sweetly as it has on some of your neighbors? Then heed that injunction. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. Psalm 37 verse 1. Perhaps the case suggested above does not exactly fit that of some of our readers. Not if you may say, my soul is cast down and my heart is heavy because I am so broke and the outlook is so dark. That is indeed a painful trial and one which mere nature often sinks under. But dear friend, there is a cure for despondency even when you are so occasioned. He who de declares a cattle upon a thousand hills are mine still lives and reigns. Cannot he who fed two million Israelites in the wilderness for forty years minister to you and your family? Can he not, who sustained Elijah in a time of famine, keep you from starving? If God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Returning to our opening text, let us observe how that David not only succumbed not to his sorrows, he interrogated his soul and rebuked his unbelief, but he also preached to himself hope 
in God. Ah, oh, that is what the despondent needs to do. Nothing else will bring relief to the hearer. The immediate outlook may be dark, but the divine promises are bright. The creature may fail you, but the creature will not if you truly put your trust in him. The world may be at its wit's end, but the Christian needs not be so. There is one who is a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, verse 1. And he never deserts those who really make him their refuge. The writer has proved this many, many a time. And so may the reader. The fact is that present conditions afford a grand opportunity for learning the sufficiency of divine grace. Faith cannot be exercised when everything needed is at hand to sight. Hope in God. In its mercy. You have sinned, sinned grievously in the past, and now you are receiving your just asserts. True, but if you will penitently confess your sins, there is abundant mercy with the Lord to blot them all out. Isaiah 55 verse 7 In his power, every door may be shut against you, every channel of hell be closed fast, but nothing is too hard for the Almighty. In his faithfulness, men may have deceived you, broken their promises, and now desert you in the hour of need. But he who cannot lie is to be depended upon, or doubt not his promises in his love. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them to the end. John 13 verse 1 For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Such is ever the blessed assurance of those who truly hope in God. They know that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Psalm 34, verse 19. God has told them that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. So Christian, when the fiery trial has done its work, and your bonds are burned off, Daniel 3, verse 25. You will thank him for the trials which are now so unpleasant. Then hopefully anticipate the future. Count upon God, and he will not fail you. Let each Christian reader who is now passing through deep waters join with the writer in fervent prayer to God, that he will graciously sanctify the present distress to the spiritual good of his people and mercifully supply their temporal needs.